how important is humility in this business? Mm -hmm. Because I I work in the arts and like music and theater, and how you present yourself and how you act can decide whether you get a job or get blacklisted. Mm -hmm. So there's that. And what is the most humblest moment of your both your career? Mm -hmm. <laughs> You came ready, boy. Came ready. <laughs> yeah, right, right. Came ready. I mean, humility, I think, to me, kind of, it, it, it kind of weaves between integrity and sacrifice to me. Um, you know, you, you, you know I, I don't know where it says it, Rev, but God gives grace to the humble. And, you know, I think of, uh, I can't think of a, a moment where I've been humble, but I think, you know, when you're playing professional sports, <laughs> I think you're humbled every day. Mm -hmm. You know, I think about when I got dunked on at University of Florida by a guy named Stacy Poole. You know, and my teammates didn't want to say anything. They were like, you know, making that face. <laughs> um, I think about, you know, when you sign a big contract, and especially here in New York, you know you're going to hear, you know, what they say your value is. But you have to have your own value. It's not aligned with basketball, right? And so to me, um, I think we're humbled. We're humbled every day. Um, I think it's something that you have to continually um, practice. You know, I think in, in our sport, and I'll, I'll you know, pass it to Kyle. Um, one of the things that I'm seeing is in, in social media, and when we're all getting hit with so many suggestions about <coughs> who we're supposed to be and. How many people like us? You got. You feel like you have to respond to ten thousand. For Kyle, might be a hundred thousand. Whatever people, right? That it is. But the reality is, those people can't tell you who, how good you are. Mm. Well, those people can't tell me how good I am. And so, to answer the first part of your question um, about the getting the job and stuff like that and being blacklisted. I remember when I was coming out of college, you never think, you know, the, the, the head of the security at your college would be interviewed for a job in the NBA, but they called him to see how I handled myself as, you know, as sort of a big man on campus. Small school, only 5,500 students, so they wanted to see how I handled myself in that small setting before they gave me another opportunity in a bigger setting. So I could have had a run-in with that officer, you know, called him all types of names outside of his name because I felt I was bigger than him. And that been maybe would have blew my opportunity. Mm -hmm. So, so that goes to show you that you don't know who you are running into yeah. at any. So that was a that was a very shocking every time, and I'm glad you know I handled that whatever encounter with him the right way. <laughs> and the most humbling probably for me was when I was actually on my road, to, you know, going to the NBA, and um, I'm just feeling like Mr. Big Shot. Nobody could tell me nothing. And the truth be told, I didn't have a contract yet. I was a second round pick, and no money was guaranteed at the moment. You know, but I'm walking around feeling myself, you know. And then when I had when I got to Orlando, you know, I'm still walking around, you know, big shot. And it's like, God, you know, you're not even on contract yet, you know. This could end today. And you'll be right back in college. So that was kind of like brought me to ground zero and it made me feel like, you know, okay, let me keep that same attitude I had when I was in college, you know, when I was just working for school meals. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I know that.